Hey there, Dominic here, continuing the introduction to the modeling and model and the covering the interface a bit. Uh, I've uh, rewatched my first one and discovered that I left out already some important concepts. Uh, you have seen me manipulating the view and you can do that in several ways. Over here in the upper right corner you have widgets to pan when you control when you click and drag on these icons you can pan over here this one you can rotate and this one you can scale uh, you can zoom in and out but I never use these icons I always use my control alt and shift keys when I alt left click and drag I can rotate when I control alt click and drag I can zoom and when I shift alt click and drag I can pan my views so alt click and drag rotate control alt click zoom and shift alt click pan so this way you can really navigate very fast uh, your modo interface uh, pressing the A key fits everything on screen pressing the shift a key fits the selection and right now the selection is actually everything in this mesh item layer but as i said before when nothing is selected everything is selected so when i for instance double click to select that connected mesh and press shift a now that is being fit to the view and as you can see when i alt left click and drag around it stays in the center which is very useful I like this way when you come from another application you might find this to be difficult because you're used to others manipulation when you go to system preferences here you can set uh, a lot of different uh, preferences I suggest you go over them uh, very important one thing that I do want to go over with is um, is it the units? No, it's in the... Um, wait to stop for a moment. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that, but in input selection you can set ignore shading style. What does this do? Well, normally, in, in, by default in mode, when I'm in, in a shaded mode, and I'm govern, going to cover that later, so over here, when you click on it, you can choose wireframe, or uh, solid, or vertex map, shaded, advanced, OpenGL, and a lot of, of other visibility options. Uh, normally, by default, when I middle click and drag select, then the selection goes all the way through. And when I right middle mouse button click and drag then it's only front facing polygons and get selected now when you're in wireframe mode by default the opposite is true so then when I middle mouse button click and drag only front facing uh, polygons get selected and right mouse button click and drag then it selects all the way through and to make that uniform I have set ignore shading style this means that even if I'm in wireframe view, when I middle click and drag, you see it selects all the way through. And when I right click and drag, it selects only front facing polygons. So that is the same as when you're in a shaded view or in an advanced OpenGL view and in a wireframe view. And that's less confusing. So ignore shading style in your preferences. Uh, for the other preferences, there's a lot to cover. Make sure to watch some videos or go through the manual. Um, another thing I left out in the first video, when I'm over here, you see those icons, but when I con hold down the control key, so I'm only holding down the control key, you see those green handles appear. And this means that when now I click on a cube, for instance, it's a unit primitive that gets created. Again, the same thing, I'm going to control Z undo. For the sphere over here, when I hold down control, you see those green handles, and I'll click, and you see it's a one meter uh, sphere that gets created. Like that. Control Z to undo. When I want a new mesh item layer, I can add items by clicking on add item. I have constraints, deformers, duplicates. Uh, duplications, uh, replicators, falloffs, forces, a uh, whole bunch of stuff to add and I can select mesh over here or I can press the N key the N 
So n gets me a empty layer. So it's grayed out. It's and that means it's an empty layer. Like you can see, there is nothing in this layer. My background layers are visible. If when I press the O key on my keyboard, I get uh, a lot of options for my viewport. Uh, for instance, I can change the point size, I can set to background not no gradient or a gradient, or I can set inactive meshes to flat shaded or to same as active item, like that. So the O key, a lot of options that you can set. You have an other tab here, visibility, which lets you show lights, cameras, locators. So the O key, very important key to set a lot of options. Um, again, over here, so uh, when I press control, I can create units uh, primitives. Or when I hit the shift key, then it will create a new unit primitive, but in a new layer. So when I control click or simply choose a tool, it will do this in this active layer. Click on this again to deactivate. When I sh hold down shift, you see a plus sign up here. And now when I click on this um, cone, you see it has added the cone but in a new layer. But you can see in the item list. Um, going to stop for a moment. Okay, I'm back. There is a lot to cover, so I can't really cover everything in this introductory video, but over here you have your item list. You can add items, you can filter items over here. Um, I have my shader tree for my materials and camera options. Now, over here I have properties and when I control click on this, now you see my camera item is selected. When I control click on it, I deselect it. And I still have something selected. And how do I know that? Well, because in properties, there are properties visible. This means that probably like that, I have an item layer selected. When I control click on it to deselect it, you see now there are no properties. So when I select an item layer, for instance, this is an empty one. I get all the properties over here. I I have my widgets for my animation. I can go to channels and select uh, my channels or I can select them over here. For instance, when I click on position X, you see now this is highlighted yellow. That does not mean there's a, uh, an, uh, an animation key on it. It simply means it has been selected. When I hover over it, I get a pop-up showing different states of that circle. I can select multiple by control clicking on them, like that. Deselecting them again, again, control click on them, or I can shift click on them, which selects them all, and then I can right click and add a key or remove keys, go to my graph editor, a lot of different possibilities. Again, control clicking deselects, control clicking adds to selection, and shift clicking selects everything in between. Um, so control click to deselect all of that. Uh, I have user channels over here, tags, all different possibilities. My channel animation channels, uh, display options, uh, if I want it to be visible, uh, the size, give it a label, bounding, show us bounding box. Uh, I have an over here also very important lists uh, with possible weight maps, you, my UV maps, morph maps, particle maps, other maps. Over here, also very powerful, the pipeline mode. Check out other videos I've created. Pipeline, for instance, when I set an action center to element, you see now I have over here action center, center element, action axis element. When I add a fall off, for instance, the linear, and I click and drag, my fall off, then that fall off gets added to the pipeline, and now when I press, for instance, the R key, but this is it. I have no data over here, so I first have to create some data. Now I have added a cube. First, going to reposition my fall off, so you can see. And I'm pressing Shift A to zoom in on on it, uh, and now, for instance, press the R key. Now my scale transform tool has been added to the pipeline. Uh, I can select these in the pipeline and make changes to them. And with the 
transform to active. Now when I click in the right release circle, you see my cube gets scaled, but more on the on this side than on this side. Uh, over here I can adjust my falloffs. Again, check out other videos about falloffs, but I just wanted to show you tool pipe, very important. I'm going to press escape and you see my tool gets cleared from the, the pipeline. Escape again, then it clears the rest of the pipeline and if I had a selection and press escape again it would clear my selection or I could simply have clicked in the viewport. Uh, what else could I say? Uh, if, I, if I have a selection of polygons then I can hold down ALT then you see the, this change over here. So for instance I have selection of polygons, ALT and now you can see the, here is an, an arrow and it says convert, convert. So when I click now convert when it says edges, ALT, convert. Now my polygon selection has been changed to edge selection and ALT again and click on the place where it was vertices. Now my selection has been converted to vertices. Another thing that I think it's important that I haven't talked about yet in other videos. On the vertex tab over here you have tools for manipulating vertices. They often also work if you have an other component selection mode. So now I'm in polygon mode. I have selected two polygons. I can use these tools and for instance in, in the, on the vertex tab. So it's not because it says vertex that I, can, that I cannot use these tools on polygons, set position for instance, y to uh, 2 meters for instance, press the enter and you enter key and you see those vertices that uh, belong to the, this polygon have been set to y is 2 meters. Uh, another important element in Modo to navigate in the interface is uh, shortcut keys. Again, uh, on Luxology TV videos about that, check them out. For instance, pressing the control space bar gets me a pie menu that lets me uh, choose uh, different uh, camera views. I can set it over here in the left upper corner. I can go to top or uh, perspective, but I can do that faster by uh, via control space bar and I get this pie menu. I can press ALT tab uh, sorry, I, I pressed space bar tab uh, ALT tab oh, sorry, again I'm a bit confused, sorry about that uh, control tab gets me several uh, modeling tools control 1 Let's me toggle lights, toggle cameras, toggle wireframe, toggle verts, my grid and work plane, uh, a lot of options to toggle. Control 2 uh, gets me wireframe, shaded style, texture, reflection, gooch, advanced OpenGL. Control 3, another pie menu for info stats pop up. When I hover over away from it, it disappears. Uh, my tools like that. These are the same tools you find over there. So control 3 and it are the number keys above the letters on your main uh, keyboard, not the, the numerical uh, numbers. So that's important when you press the control. Control 4 gets you another set of tools. Uh, control 5 lets you I think I have something selected now. And this control four, control five lets you set and control six lets you for instance set the background options. Uh, for instance the flat shaded. Now my background layers are flat shaded. Control six again, same as active item. Now they are the same shading style as my active layer. Uh, invisible. So only uh, the item that is selected is visible. Control six again. Uh, wireframe or control 6 show weight maps to toggle that on and off. Uh, I have my F keys. F2 gets me a model panel. F3 gets me a sculpt panel. F4 gives me an animate tools. F5 gets me a command history. F6 gets me a presets uh, manager. So you see there is a lot going on with a lot of shortcuts. Um, going to stop for a while. 
Okay, I'm back. Another very useful part of the Modo interface is statistics over here and info. Uh, statistics, and by the way, you can click and drag these panels on the divider, or you can, when you hover your mouse over it and press zero, it will maximize it. F and you can, for instance, check out uh, vertices by polygons. And then you can see over here, I have eight polygons that uh, share three vertices. And okay, I must have done something earlier that uh, made converted this into trees. I'm going to stop for a moment. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I was uh, in vertices. Uh, it's more this was uh, the one. That, so in polygons, I can see here how many uh, quads I have. I have six quads. I can click the plus sign over here and it will select all the quads. Now if I had some trees, so I'm going to press C for my edge, edge slice tool and cr create two trees. Now I have two trees. Now you can see over here that I have three, um, that I have two polygons that share, that have three, that, that there are polygons that only have three vertices. When I click the plus sign, it selects them. And I have five polygons which have four vertices. When I click the plus sign now, it adds to that selection. And when I want to subtract from that selection, I can click here, minus, and now those threes have been deselected. So this can be a very useful way uh, of selecting. And again, watch Luxella GTV. Uh, there are several videos which are very useful for uh, making selections. Um, I can, oh, ex excuse me, I, I have by by type, like faces, sub scatmal clock curves, Bezier, there's all different possibilities to make selections uh, by vertex, by parts, by material, possible to make selections. Uh, check out the manual for this, uh, other videos press the zero key again to make it smaller again. I also have my info and this will, press the zero key again, will show information about my components that have been selected. So when I deselect everything, it's empty. Now when I select this polygon, you see type, four vertices, the flatness, the material and which part. It's all been default at this time. When I press the spacebar, I go to vertices mode, select the vert by left clicking and dragging and, and um, while I'm still holding down the key, the left key, I can add to that selection. And now you see there are two vertices in my info and I get it's their positions, their subdivision if it's been weighted, uh, something about the texture also. Um, also when, when I press the spacebar I go to edge mode now when I click and drag over that edge, that edge is selected. Again, X, Y, Z for the start, X, Y, Z for the end, weight and also the length. Uh, when I'm doing operations, I can do it manually over here in the properties, but I can also set manually over here. So for instance, X start is 217 on the X axis. When I set it, for instance, to zero, now you see that third has gone to x is zero. When I set it to, for instance, three, now you see that edge over here has jumped to the three, so I can uh, numerically place vertices over here. Uh, other options include set position over here, covered in a different video. Uh, press zero again to minimize. Uh, presets over here, suggest to check it out in the manual. Um, I'll just stop for a moment. Okay, I'm back and I think this video has become quite lengthy already. I'm going to stop for now and check if it's useful to add more information. So this was Dominic. And